Oh, it's Monday, and you know what that means. The weekend is officially gone, and the work week has began. So you might as well buckle up, Buttercup. We're going to talk about Vinegar Syndrome's Cloak and Dagger 4K. Don't go anywhere. Previously on the Nerdy Ronin Network. Yes, yes. In, in closing, I will leave you with... A quote from Pompeii, 79 A.D. Ack! The floor is lava! Happy, happy Monday. That's right. Now, Mondays generally are horrible because the work week has began... And everybody's like, meh. But hey, I'm here. So let's start your day off right. And let's talk about good entertainment. How about that? Yes. Whoo, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for being here. We're always glad to see you. In the description down below are some things we love. Nobody pays us. It's just great quality products. Please check them out. You might find your new favorite. So today, we are going to talk about nostalgia. And good quality products. And they don't go hand in hand. Most times. In most situations. In entertainment today. Nostalgia is used as bait. When fishing for fans. And then what you actually get. Is rotten. So. It's interesting and amazing. Amazing. To find something that's full of nostalgia. And is a great, great quality product. Like this right here. We are talking about Cloak and Dagger, 1984, PG, hour and 41 minutes. Directed by the late Richard Franklin. Uh, written by Tom Holland. Cornell Woolrich, Nancy Dowd, who was uncredited. Stars Henry Thomas, Dabney Coleman. Let, let me tell you something. Dabney Coleman and Henry Thomas in this movie are fantastic. Dabney Coleman plays two people. He plays uh, Henry Thomas' uh, dad and imaginary friend. Uh, that's right. This is a great, unique story from way back in the day that Vinegar Syndrome has been nice enough to redo, make a new transfer of it into 4K with some great packaging, some great supplementals, and brings back the good time nostalgia villain. Now, here's what happens. So what had happened was, a young boy and his imaginary friend end up on the run while in possession of a top secret spy gadget. <laughs> a game cartridge that has top secret government intel about a brand new bomber plane. Basically, it, it's it's a play on the boy who cried wolf. Uh, Davy is very is struggling. His mother has passed away recently, and he's very imaginative. He loves role playing games and uh, game card, you know, playing video games and whatnot. And sometimes his imagination gets away with him, you know, takes off, and his imaginary uh, friend. It's right there, and they have these adventures and whatnot. It's just fantastic, but then he sees somebody actually murdered, and the person gives him a game cartridge that has a top-secret thing on it, and the bad guys see him, and they're chasing him, and it's insanity. Insanity ensues. Some of the shots, the cinematography is great, they shot this in San Antonio, Texas, because that's where uh, Henry Thomas lived, so it made it easier. Uh, of course, some of it they shot in L.A. and whatnot, but uh, the like you actually see quite a bit of San Antonio, including the outside of the Alamo, which they were allowed to film at the doors, outside doors of the Alamo, but the interior of the Alamo is on a soundstage. Uh, and the sub look. There are some really great camera angles and tricks in this uh, in regards to the dad and the imaginary friend, you know, 
as one is leaving, the other one's there, and it's the same person. It's fantastic. It's, it's really well done. It's well written. Tom Holland did a great job with this with this story, and uh, it's kind of based off of Hitchcockian stuff because it's. There's a huge long story that I'm not going to ruin that's on the supplementals with Tom Holland talking about it and what this originally was and then how they turned it to this. I got to say, I could watch this once a month. Like, it, it just brings back so many fond memories. Uh, as I saw this as a kid. And I know that was many, many, many moons ago, but... It, to this day, I have I remember this movie as being such a great, enjoyful time watching this. The enjoyment I got out of it as a child and now as an adult. Does it hold up? I believe so. Um, I mean, you know, there's some great stuff here. It's just great entertainment. It's just a good movie. And William Forsyth's in this movie in one of his first roles. Uh, see if you can spot him. He may or may not be in the thumbnail of this video. <laughs> if you're looking for just grade A entertainment. And an 80's just downright fun time. This is the movie for you. And I don't care if you just go get it on Blu-ray or you watch it on streaming or whatever you do. This movie is just enjoyable. And Henry Thomas had just come off of basically doing E.T. And he does a fantastic job. And my only, my only sadness in the supplementals of this is Dabney Coleman is nowhere on it. Because evidently Dabney Coleman and the director, the late Richard Franklin, got into it real bad uh, when making this movie. So, as far as Dabney Coleman was concerned, he hated the experience of making this movie. But you cannot tell it when watching this film. He is amazing as always. Dabney Coleman is a fantastic actor. He has comedic chops, but also can be extremely serious and well done, sir. It's too bad you felt this was a bad experience. Um, so there you have it. Right? I mean, good entertainment? Talking about good entertainment on a Monday? What? I hope you guys had a great weekend. I'm always glad that you're here. Squeaky and I, and Bob and Michael and Michael, we all... Are so appreciative that you're here and we're glad to see you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Friday as we call it here. So we will be back on Hump Day, Wednesday. That's right. We're gonna be talking samurai film this week on Wednesday. So you don't want to miss that either. So we're Michael the microphone, Bob, squeaky chair, way back in the back. And this nostalgia-loving fat nerd. We'll see you on Wednesday.